return to a part of the country scene which has certainly seen enormous changes over the past few years. It's the cattle market. Once no more than just a haphazard gathering of farmers, animals and buyers, the markets are now much fewer in number but vastly better organised. Now, before the last war, it was all very different. Farmers often had to walk several miles to market with their cattle. And after the sale, the animals themselves sometimes had to trek as much as 20 miles to the nearest railhead. Well, it was a hard life that occasionally produced some pretty hard drinking on market day. The pubs usually stayed open late, and with gin at just four pence a glass, my goodness, can you remember that? Farmers took full advantage of it. In those days, the cattle weren't even weighed in. The auctioneer and the buyers just judged the animal's weight by eye. But government controls during World War II ended those relaxed ways forever. All the cattle had to be graded and weighed. To see how a modern market operates today, I went along to Lansen, the ancient capital of Cornwall, and now the centre of one of the country's most thriving weekly markets. The days of walking the animals to market are long gone. Now the narrow streets and the towns see the coming and going of over six million pounds worth of cattle every year. For the rich pasture land around the town has long been favoured by farmers buying in animals to fatten for sale. Every Tuesday, the council-owned market site bustles with early morning activity as hundreds of animals are unloaded. But how important is this weekly ritual? Well, it means everything to us, really. Uh, it's our living. We, we, we got to uh, find out the prices of cattle, what cattle are up to from, from week to week, because if, you, if you're if you losing a few pence per kilo on, on a 700 pound kilogram bullock, you can lose a lot of money, uh, and uh, week by week, well, you have to see how things are going. At the height of the season, the market is said to be one of the busiest in the country, with 13,000 cattle entering the ring every year. Around 20 buyers attend Lanson Market every week, representing all the major wholesale firms, and their buying power is enormous. Meanwhile, the drovers are also hard at work. The use of a stick is necessary, they say, because of the risks involved. I've been uh, knocked along by a heifer and a bull with the horns, so I know what it's all about. But if we thought about those kind of things, we wouldn't be here. I was um, loading a cow and calf into a lorry, and the cow went for me, gored me. But I was very lucky, I was quick and got out of his way. Ten years ago, many experts were predicting the eventual decline of these traditional markets, but now they're stronger than ever but they've also become more professional. Uh, oh, the market has changed a little over the years. Not, not a lot. It's still very much a, a, a social meeting place of a market day, but perhaps nowadays it would have taken on a more business-like and less traditional attitude than 10 or 15 years ago. Oh, the farmers had to become more business-like. He, he's very much a businessman. Now he, he looks after these things for two, two years, and obviously when he sells them, he wants to obtain the very best price that he can for that and studies the job very carefully. They also seem to spend less time here, don't they? Why isn't that? Well, there will be many less men working on farms today than ten years ago. Many less men. Most, most, of, the, most of the men who come here with cattle today would have had to do their morning work at home, come here uh, to sell at half past ten, and then they would be away home again now to do their evening work at home. So that's really taken some of the flavour, some of the colour out of it, really? Yes, they spend less of the afternoon at market than they used to. Why do they bother to come to market at all instead of selling direct, say, to the slaughterhouse? Oh, I would have to tell you to get a better price, but um, to be fair, uh, a lot of the time they would get a better price in the market, uh, but also they have got the advantage, they get paid quickly by the auctioneers, and also they have freedom of choice right up to the moment of sale. If the price is not good enough, they can decide, no, I'll take it home and sell it another day, which they can't do if they sell dead weight, because by the time they would make that decision, the bullock's already dead and can't be taken home again.
Ironically, an improvement in cattle breeding has brought an unusual problem for drovers. The introduction of continental varieties into the bloodlines has brought some Latin high spirits to our cattle farms. According to the drovers, it can make them unpredictable and dangerous. But the use of the stick and the practice of punching a hole in the animal's ears to mark them for slaughter does produce criticism from outsiders. It's a situation that's led to the regular presence of the RSPCA inspector at every market day. His job is to keep a special eye on the way the cattle are handled. Of course, our main problem is during the holiday season, June, July and August, when we have a lot of visitors visit the market. And, of course, they are concerned, as we are concerned, to see these animals with a, a large hole in their ear and blood on the ground. But uh, I'm afraid, as the war stands at the moment, there's not too much we can do about it. But, of course, in this modern day and age, we would like to see something a, a little more humane. On the whole, are you sort of reasonably happy with the way that the drovers and the owners conduct themselves around the animals? Oh, yes. I, I think our mere presence is a, a bit of a deterrent. Um, people obviously are uh, a little bit concerned of the use of the sticks, but uh, if we're around, they are not used more than is absolutely necessary. The days of drunken market scenes have passed forever. Most farmers simply can't spare the whole day away from their farms. And it's usually a case of grabbing a quick lunch, then returning to finish the day's work. But the pubs near the market say that Tuesdays can still provide their best business of the week. Sharing the Race Hill site at Lanson is the pannier market, where the farmers' wives can get on with their shopping. The markets are held here every Tuesday and Saturday. Once again, the future of this venture didn't look too bright a few years ago, but now more and more stalls are being set up. But as market day drew to a close, how did one of the regular customers rate its success? Oh, well, this has been a good market because there weren't many cattle uh, present. Uh, the numbers were down, and obviously more buyers looking for this number of cattle, and their prices were high today. And one would have expected a lower price, but in fact it's stayed up, you know, and uh, we found that it's fairly expensive. William, if you've been coming to this market for the last 50 years, what, what's the pleasure you get out of it? Why'd you come? Well, I made a lot of friends. I made a lot of friends and make more friends. And uh, I enjoy it, and the wife always brings to come. And uh, we, this is our pleasure, if you like, for coming here for two hours, midday. You know, you go home again and do the work. You come in at perhaps 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. Most times I bring in a few bullets in a passport box I got, or sometimes we got a lorry, and uh, try to try to make a living. Do you reckon this is the best way of selling it? Well, we got to have competition. You must have competition. You want dead weight as well as the market. But I bet you have a good old gossip when you come to something like this as well, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this where you pass all the news around? Well, yes, you know. Those are getting hit stuff or matched up and so on. Yeah, that's right. Oh, well, I don't know. It's a uh, whole day off, as you like, or an half a day off. From Lanson, the cattle are loaded for their last journey to slaughterhouses, sometimes as far north as the Midlands. The days of the 20-mile walk to the railhead may be long gone, but many animals still face a two-day road journey cramped in the back of a lorry. Even the traditional comfort of straw bedding is now often denied them.